I'm Roger Baker, Executive Director of the Stratfor Center for Applied Geopolitics at RAIN, a global center of excellence for geopolitical intelligence and analysis. Learn how you can put geopolitics to work for your organization at RAINnetwork.com. Welcome to RAIN's Essential Geopolitics Podcast. I'm Ryan Boll, a senior Middle East and North Africa analyst here at the RAIN Network. On February 25th, Africa's most populous country, Nigeria, goes to the polls, and at stake is the future of the continent's largest economy and its ongoing battles against extremism, corruption, and instability. It's now in its longest stretch of democratic rule since independence from the United Kingdom in 1960. And today, we talk about this important country with Clara Brackbill, our sub-Saharan Africa analyst, as we discuss the future of Nigerian democracy. Thanks for joining me, Clara. Hi, Ryan. Thanks for having me. So let's dive right in. And who are the main contenders for president? And what do we need to know about them? Well, there are many presidential contenders this year. There's uh, more than 15. Um, but three front runners have emerged. And the first is Bola Tinubu, um, who's running with the All Progressive Congress, the ruling party. Um, and Tinubu is the former governor of Lagos State um, and a southern APC, the ruling party, uh, political heavyweight. He's uh, 70 years old and from Osun State in Nigeria's southwest. Um, and, and Tinubu is uh, Muslim, which is an issue for many Southern Christian Nigerians who um, were counting on the 2023 election to rotate presidential power back to the South um, and to a Christian candidate. Um, now, Tinubu's political career has been long and storied um, with several uh, corruption controversies, um, one of which uh, happened about 30 years ago when the U.S. government accused him of laundering the proceeds of heroin trafficking. Um, eventually, the two sides reached a settlement, um, but that's just one, one example of, of several corruption allegations against the uh, presidential candidate. Um, now, Tinubu is running on a continuity ticket um, with Nigeria's current president, Mohamedou Bou Buhari. Um, now, Buhari remains popular in several northern states, um, but has seen national approval ratings decline as Nigeria struggles with uh, many of those problems you mentioned at the top, including declining oil outputs um, and rampant insecurity. So Tinubu has um, really strong political networks, um, as well as deep pockets, which um, makes him a favorite for, for the upcoming election. Running against Tanubu um, are two other candidates, one of whom is Atiku Abubakar of the opposition People's Democratic Party. Um, and Atiku has run for president. This will be his sixth attempt. Um, and he is also in his 70s. I believe he's 76. Um, and he comes from the northeastern Adamawa state um, and is also Muslim, um, which, as I mentioned, um, is cause for concern and, and growing anger uh, within both uh, the PDP, the opposition party, and for some Southern Christian Nigerians. Um, and Atiku's platform largely centers on um, reviving the economy, um, for which he, he blames Buhari for um, economic stagnation and rampant corruption, as well as the worsening security crisis. Um, now, Atiku, um, he's also suffered from uh, several iterations of corruption allegations, um, including when he served as, as vice president in the, in the 2000s. Um, Atiku allegedly brought tens of millions of, of dollars of suspect funds um, into the United States, uh, according to a, a U.S. Senate report, and, and was also implicated, implicated in a bribery case during his tenure as, as VP. Um, now, Atiku is also extremely wealthy um, and has lots of wealthy donors and deeply embedded political networks within the PDP. Um, so he is, if not the favorite, uh, perhaps the, the second uh, runner-up to, to, to Nubu. Um, and then lastly, we have Peter Obi of the Labor Party. And Obi is um, often referred to as a third party candidate um, because he actually defected from the PDP, the opposition party. Um, and now Obi is from the southeastern Anambra state and is Christian which has also prompted a surge in support from Southern Christians who are frustrated with the APC and PDP's failure to nominate um, candidates uh, from the South and, and who are Christian. So Obi has actually topped opinion polls in the run up to the election and has built quite a following um, among mostly young urban Nigerians who are frustrated with the status quo. 
Uh, Obi is only 61, and the youngest of the front runners, and has based his platform on taking Nigeria back from corrupt politicians. Um, now, while Obi doesn't have the same record of corruption allegations against him as the other two candidates, um, there are some some more minor allegations, including uh, opponents who say he failed to declare offshore accounts um, and that he invested state funds into a company that he had um, when he was governor of Anambra State. Um, so, so there's a picture of, of the three uh, potential uh, Nigerian presidents. So do you have a favorite or, or maybe I should phrase it, how are these candidates doing against one another? Is there a, a favorite who seems to be the, the front runner? Well, like I said, um, Obi is is topping opinion polls, um, but I think an important thing to note here is that the polls uh, may be slightly skewed insofar as that a lot of them are conducted by both phone um, or internet, um, which would favor Obi supporters given the fact that most of his base, like I said, is young and urban, whereas many more of Tanubu and Atiku supporters are older and rural. Um, and on top of that, um, from past elections, we know that opinion polling in the run-up um, is not always reliable or, or an accurate indicator of the outcome. Um, so then if we look at some other potential signposts, um, Atiku and Tanubu both have political and financial networks that Obi does not. Um, and, and that also uh, relates to the political parties that they come from. So Obi, um, being the Labor Party candidate, uh, does not have the, the political embeddedness. Um, and we see that in, in governorships. Um, so in Nigerian elections, governors are often extremely decisive um, in, in determining how a state will vote. And the Labor Party um, doesn't have doesn't hold the same governor positions that either the APC or the TV or the PDP do. Um, and then along with that, uh, or rather in, in the same vein, um, Obi's candidacy, even if he doesn't win due to those, um, you know, uh, lacking financial resources and lack of political embeddedness, um, he could still pull support from either or both of the other candidates. Um, and an example of this is in the Southern River State, um, which has historically been uh, fairly decisive given um, its high voter turnout. So there are actually only 1.7 registered voters in, in River State compared to, um, say, Lagos State, which has 7 million voters. However, the rate of turnout is much much higher in rivers. Um, and now in some political disputes um, that I won't get into here, uh, between the governor of River State and um, Atiku, the PDP candidate, um, may actually end up pulling votes from the PDP um, in favor of uh, Peter Obi, the, the Southeastern Christian candidate, um, which could end up uh, favoring Tanubu, the, the Lagos, uh, the former Lagos state governor, um, uh, in in the in the final tally, so um, there are many dynamics at play here. But but right now, it's looking like Obi does not have the uh, financial or, or political support to to um, overcome uh, either Tanubu or Atiku. Now, Nigeria also has a history of election related violence. Uh, what does the security landscape look like, and, and should we expect violence after this election? Well, I think. Um, the question is during and after, or, or rather in the, in the run up to during and after the election. Um, we're already seeing um, fairly widespread polling station violence. Um, between November uh, 2022 and mid-January of this year, the Nigerian Electoral Commission recorded at least 50 attacks on its offices and voting infrastructure. Um, and then on top of that, we have a very active jihadist insurgency in the northeast of the country, um, rampant banditry in the northwest and central regions, um, high criminal activity in urban centers like Lagos and Abuja. Um, and then we also have a separatist movement um, in the southeast that has uh, worsened in terms of violence and um, uh, barriers to economic participation under uh, Buhari's tenure. Um, so with that, uh, I think that we can certainly expect election day violence. Um, and the risk of that is heightened by the ongoing uh, cash crisis in Nigeria right now. So uh, current President Buhari introduced a currency swap in November under which Nigerians are supposed to swap old bills um, of high denominations for new bills. Um, but the, the policy has been off to a really rocky start and uh, actually ended up leading to cash shortages throughout the country. 
um, particularly as about 40% of Nigerians lack access to, um, to banking and financial institutions, uh, meaning it's a cash economy. So the cash shortages uh, are causing uh, widespread economic chaos, particularly in rural areas, but is also impacting um, politicians' tendencies around election time to buy votes. Um, so this could actually spur increased violence um, where there may not have been originally. Uh, we're seeing violence at ATMs, banks, retail, sco- retail stores, um, and, and markets over recent weeks um, over frustration. Um, and you know, as we um, as as voters go to the polls, um, I, I think that the that the cash shortage um, and associated violence could easily um, coalesce with um, you know regular Nigerian election era violence. So a lot of factors at play and certainly a very fluid race uh, going into the end of the month. Thank you so much, Clara, for joining me. Thanks for having me, Ryan. Understanding geopolitics is critical to future planning, whether you run a multinational conglomerate or you're planning a trip to a place you've never been. Rain offers businesses a complete geopolitical intelligence solution with worldview for enterprises. Our app delivers forward-looking enterprise-level analysis and tools that enhance your ability to understand what happens next. Learn more about Rain's geopolitical intelligence solution at rainnetwork.com. That's R A N E network.com. I'm Ryan Bull. Thanks for listening.